What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca if you are new and here we talk about all things Disney, mom life. So if that interests you, I would love for you to stick around and hit that subscribe button. And if you could also go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. So today we are going to be talking about my top five off-site hotels at Disney World. Now I will start by saying I really appreciate nice places <laughs> and it plays a huge role in my vacation experience and I know some people view a hotel as just it's a place to sleep and a place to shower and then who cares but I like really nice accommodations so this is my top five list of hotels that I personally would stay at and a couple of them I would call very budget friendly and then the others are more in a moderate category. So let's go ahead and get started. The first two options I'm gonna mention are actually a condo style. So if you like having a one, two or three bedroom villa with a full kitchen, living room, multiple bathrooms, you like having that washer and dryer, you have a large family, then these are gonna be a couple of great options for you. The first one I'm gonna mention is called Flory Days Resort. Now I have stayed here twice actually and this resort is beautiful. I would say it falls into a moderate to deluxe category, but it's still a great option if, again, you're looking for that condo style and you have a large family and you need a lot of space, this is going to be a great option for you. It has a little over 1,600 villas on this property, so a pretty large resort, and it's located about 15 minutes from Magic Kingdom, which is really, really great that you are really close to Disney property. Let's talk about some of the amenities with Flory Days. Now there are two pools. There's one main pool and then one smaller pool, which I think is interesting that they only have two pool options because of how large this property is. So if your villa is located on the far end of the resort, you will definitely need to drive if you're going to want to be at the main pool. The other thing I want to mention is food. There are not a lot of food options here. There's one little grab and go kind of Starbucks area in the main building. And then there's also a pool bar and grill at the main pool, but that's pretty much it. But if you're spending most of your time in the parks, then food at the resort isn't going to be a huge concern, especially if you have a full kitchen. You're probably ordering groceries and you can keep your kitchen stocked there. So I don't think the food options is a huge drawback to this resort just because it's that villa condo style, but it is something to take note of. The other thing I wanted to mention is the shuttle. It does offer a free shuttle that's included with your stay for all guests um, to and from the parks. I will say that it is limited though. So that's all they have listed on their website right now. I'm not sure what limited means, but I want to say they only offer maybe one or two departure and arrival times to and from each of the parks each day. So it would just need to fit pretty perfectly with your schedule and what you have going on that day specifically, but it is offered and it is included for free, which is really nice. And lastly, the price point for Flory Days is really reasonable. I have seen rates as low as $150 a night for a two bedroom villa. And I've seen them go up to 350 to even $400 a night for a three bedroom villa. But again, compare that to a Disney grand villa for a three bedroom condo. I mean, even $400 a night is still an incredible deal. And that would be at the peak season at Florida days. So you could go in the lower season, and find a two or three bedroom villa there for around that $200 price point per night, which I think is incredible for what you're getting. Moving on, the next resort I'm gonna mention is no surprise if you have been following my channel for a while, and it is Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek. Now, this resort is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> we have stayed here countless times. It is our go-to off-site 
Resort. It's very similar to Flory Days. It actually has a very similar feel even just with the decor and the layout of the room. I think that both resorts are pretty on par with each other. I will actually link the full review I did on Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek above. So if you want to dive in a little bit deeper and hear all of my thoughts and all of the amenities with this resort, definitely check that out. But basically the thing that sets Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek apart from Flory Days is it does have a one bedroom option, which Flory Days does not. The buildings are very close together and they're in a circular layout, which I like a little bit better because everything feels more centrally located, if that makes sense. Again, with the amenities with Bonnet Creek, I love that there are so many options and we haven't even been able to take advantage of all of the options for as many times as we've stayed there. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, there are four main pool areas, two lazy rivers, and two separate kids areas. One of the kids areas has this giant pirate ship with this big water slide, which is so cool. And then there's a smaller kids area with a splash pad for the little ones. So lots of options for really anybody to enjoy. And then when it comes to food, there are four different restaurant options and there are also a couple different pool bars, but there's pizza, there's Mexican, there's a grab and go kind of Starbucks area as well. And then there's even a couple sit down restaurants that include a breakfast buffet, a really nice dinner area. I mean, so many options. You could honestly spend days and days here and never have to leave the resort because there is so much going on. The other thing that's helpful to know about Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek is their shuttle service. They do offer a shuttle, but I will say you're probably better off taking an Uber or just renting a car here because it's $8 per person each way. So if you want to get to Magic Kingdom and you have a family of five, that's gonna add up really quick. You would definitely be better off taking an Uber. So something to note about Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek is that shuttle service may not always be the most efficient form of transportation <laughs> to and from the parks. And lastly, the price point is very similar to Flory Days. We've gotten one and two bedroom villas for $110 a night. And then I've also seen prices go up in the peak season to three, 350 a night. So again, it really all depends on what time of year you're traveling, but yet again, still a three bedroom villa for $350 a night is a steal for a Disney vacation. So it's a great option if you're traveling with a large family and you need that extra space, but you are on a budget. The next three options I'm gonna mention are regular standard hotels. And even though I've never stayed at these places before, I have done extensive research. <laughs> so these are all places that I would absolutely stay at in a heartbeat and I have looked into staying here. So I'm really excited to share about these hotels. Okay, so this next one I'm gonna mention is called the JW Marriott Bonnet Creek. Now, this is actually a newer hotel located in the Bonnet Creek area, right next door to Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek. So great location. You're just a few minutes away from Epcot and Hollywood Studios, which is amazing. And this hotel looks unbelievable. It looks so nice. And I think because it's a newer hotel, the rates are a little bit lower right now, which I'm always a fan of. Get in while it's a little newer and everything is fresh and clean, but it hasn't quite gotten super popular yet. So I'm really excited to share about this place. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the amenities with the JW Marriott. So I have a few notes here, starting with dining. There are a couple sit down restaurants, which I think is always amazing. There's a steakhouse, which looks unbelievable, a Japanese restaurant, a beer garden, and there's also a couple bar and grill areas as well. And then of course this gorgeous lobby bar area. I mean, just, so stunning. And then when it comes to the pools, there's a family pool and then a separate adult only pool. So while I do think this hotel is a great option for families with younger kids, I do think that if you are on a honeymoon or a baby moon or an anniversary trip, this is going to be a great option for you. Just again, because of that adult only pool, there's some signature level dining and things like that. So I think this is going to be a great option if you're looking for that. 
And lastly, the price point with the JW Marriott in Bonnet Creek ranges between $200 and $250 a night. Of course, I think that range is going to change very soon. And another thing to keep in mind with this hotel is there is a $35 nightly resort fee. I believe that includes parking if you are driving, and that also includes your transportation to the parks, which again is limited, so it would really need to fit within your schedule. But but that resort fee is basically paying for your transportation and or parking. So something to just factor into the cost. Those resort fees can sneak up on you if you are not expecting them. But if you factor that into the cost of what you're expecting to pay, then I still think that this is a great option to get that deluxe luxurious hotel feel for a really incredible price. The last two hotels I'm gonna mention are actually connected by a conference center. So the amenities for both of these hotels are essentially the same, but I'm gonna count them as separate hotels because they are separate price points, different experiences, so I just wanted to note that. But this next hotel I'm gonna mention is the Hilton Orlando Bonnet Creek, again, right in that same Bonnet Creek area. It's a great location and it does include that conference area. So they've recently added that on and it's called the Signia now. So you'll see this hotel listed as Signia by Hilton Orlando Bonnet Creek, but know that it's essentially the same thing. The amenities at Hilton Bonnet Creek are incredible because it is a shared space with, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's the Waldorf Astoria next door. Now, I again have to read this on my notes. So the dining options for both of these resorts include, I say resorts, they're hotels. Both of these hotels are an Italian restaurant, a full steakhouse, and then 10 different bar and grills and lounge areas as well. So whether you're staying at the Waldorf or the Hilton Bonnet Creek, you have access to all of those amenities and both of the resorts are in walking distance and then they're connected by that conference center. So that is for dining. And then with the Hilton, there's a beautiful pool area, but then it also has a lazy river and a slide. So I would say this resort is definitely geared towards families, but you still, again, get that luxurious deluxe feel, and then it has that lazy river and slide for the kids, which I think is so fun. And then if you want to walk over to the Waldorf, you have access to their pool amenities as well, which I think is unbelievable because their pool is beautiful and that whole property is just stunning. So I love that you have access to both pools, whether you're staying at the Waldorf or the Hilton. And the price point at Hilton Bonnet Creek is again, really reasonable, it's very similar to the JW Marriott. You're gonna find rates between 200 and $250 a night, which again is just a steal, I think, for what you're getting, especially if you have access to the amenities at the Waldorf. And lastly, let's just dive into the Waldorf Astoria because clearly this has been the hotel that I am the most excited about. And I'm dying to stay at this hotel because it just looks stunning. So like I've been mentioning, you do have access to all of the amenities over at Hilton Bonnet Creek. You can walk over and use their Lazy River. That kids pool area looks so fun. And then most of the dining locations are actually located at the Waldorf. So that's one thing that sets it apart from the Hilton is you do have access to most of the dining and bars and grills are at the Waldorf. And one thing about the Waldorf is that they do have larger suite options. So if you want the kitchen, the living room, a couple bathrooms, that is an option if you're wanting to splurge a little bit. You can always do that at the Waldorf. Of course, you're gonna pay a little bit more. And the last thing I wanna note about the Waldorf as well as Hilton Bonnet Creek is that transportation to and from the parks is currently not available and they don't have any updates as to what that will look like moving forward. The last thing I wanna mention is the price point with the Waldorf. And it's actually not insane like you would imagine. If you look at the property and you look at the pictures, you're thinking, oh my goodness, Grand Floridian level. But the price actually ranges from $350 to $500 a night, which again, if you compare that to the Grand Floridian, it's not insane. I mean, these days that's what you're paying for sometimes even a moderate resort at Disney World. And so to think about all of the amenities that you're getting at the Waldorf for the same price as a moderate, 
crazy. And for all of these hotels, you can always find incredible last minute deals on Priceline, Hotels.com. I'm thinking I'm going to do a video tutorial showing you how to utilize those hot deals and express deals to get hotels like the Waldorf and Hilton Bonnet Creek for even less than the prices that I've listed in this video. So definitely let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in. All right, well, that is it. Those are my top five off-site hotels near Disney World. I hope this was helpful hearing from someone who has very luxurious taste, <laughs> but is still on a budget. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.